go to the meeting, one of the, um, I asked her to text me because this morning was on the K-12 reporting, because uh, we're trying to see when it's supposed to roll out, and most of said it looks like it will actually be finalized by the end of the school year, and then the announcement's coming, and they're going to make a few changes, so I think it's, it's best that we will have to wait, because by your last board meeting, we will have the official notice and the official document, so I think it would be better for me have a discussion, and as you know, if you do know around um, some of the reporting changes, there's some controversy currently around um, uh, proficiency reporting versus um, given that extensive work that's been done to develop the TEA. And part of the, uh, it, it will be part of the discussion to so then it's meeting and questioning it and for the uh, discussion. And one of our points um, will be around BCT that it doesn't, um, um, it's not for treating patients. And so there's all, all these discussions a lot provincially about transportation and things that um, are being given provincially to nations, but treating nations aren't part of that. They spend the money. So part of our discussion is everybody's moving forward in terms of treaty, so we need to have a framework that the ministry that reflects treaty nation. So that's something we're going to bring to that meeting today. Thanks for that, Jane. Any other comments? Okay, a motion that the correspondence listed items for A and B be received. Rob, so moved. Seconded by Jacqueline. And carried. Okay, so we've got some outgoing correspondence. Uh, yeah, to uh, Joyce Carlson and Lisa Gunn, um, it was really lovely to hear from both of them um, and hear all about their demonstrated commitment to their membership and to the many programs and services that they make available through the Rotary Club. Um, especially interested in seeing their um, keen interest on um, building up student involvement in the Festival of the Performing Arts. Um, obviously, there's many valuable and transferable skills uh, in getting up in front of a group and being involved in speech arts. It was nice to hear directly from Joyce and Lisa. Yes, and she has connected with uh, Vanessa to look at offering a, a workshop at a professional development day about how, to, how we can uh, support speech arts in, in schools to increase the um, activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that moves us into your superintendent's report then, Jay. Okay. Um, so the first, I just wanted to kind of update you. We've been working uh, with principals, and we always try to get a, an idea of where we're for next year so we can provide our staffing. Sometimes some schools have an extra division and other little news and division in it. Uh, so at this point, it looks like we're um, kind of status quo. We expect to maybe grow um, like we did this year. By, by a bit, um, and it is kind of under our control too because, uh, as you know, we have a provincial polls. We're still working with government around the framework for that, and we do have uh, a waiting list of students for that program. So we just have to have internal discussions about our capacity and how many students we can um, handle within that within the program. And it's been it's been growing exponentially every, every year. The, um, oh, and then the other is the, the staffing tool. Along with that, is we're really, really happy to be able to um, be in a position where uh, all of our continuing teachers will have a position and we will have um, layoffs. And we've just uh, done our preliminary work with, with QP and audience here, and we, we met with her and we're hoping um, that we're in the same situation where we won't have any layoffs um, for QP going into into next, next year some movement, um, but um, if it looks like everybody will be back. Um, the uh, summer programming, again, just an, an update. <coughs> we have our uh, nine, um, our secondary program that, that we always have for students. We're above 40% uh, and want to uh, attend uh, summer school, and they have a, a a package of the um, required outcomes of the course that they work through with secondary teachers. Um, uh, and it's an online, but people have to attend 
um, and then they complete so they can get their credits and move on to the, the next um, year. And we've done that for a number of years. Uh, we still have the uh, Elite Outdoor uh, Program, and we'll be talking to the Outdoor Running Committee uh, around um, so, so we hope to have some kind of uh, um, elementary programming, some kind of outdoor, which we're thinking could be at school sites instead of um, necessarily OSC, because they might be day programs. So we'll look into that. And then uh, our regular summer learning, and I see Kristen's here, so she can tell you about uh, our elementary program that's really robust. Yeah, first, before you hop in, Kristen, can I just ask about the LEAP? Didn't LEAP already do, like, a grade 7? Leadership. Great camps, great seven camps. Yeah. So every year we're grade seven camp and we all have an overnight to see. But we, the committee wanted to look at what, what are the summer opportunities oh, for, for yeah. students. And um, we know that the, uh, the city has a, has a camp. And so we're just looking at are there ways that we can um, support students and, until we have a meeting you know, to mm -hmm. play with that little Thanks. Before I no worries. Uh, so last year we met K to three, and um, actually the last two years, it's really focused um, on early literacy and numeracy, but keeping it fun and engaging. And so it runs from nine to twelve, and it's three weeks. The last two weeks in July, we do two days of training the week before, just so everyone's on the same page. It's really small groups of students, usually around ten to twelve. <coughs> Um, in a group and we get lots of new teachers so it's a great opportunity for them to learn some new skills and then practice them and try them out. This year, last year we had a bunch of students ask, well, where, where have they gone through the year before? We're in grade four, we want to still come. And so we let those few come, oh yeah, no problem. And then they still wanted to come. So we opened it up to K-5 this year. And the last time I checked earlier really, today, we were at 97 um, enrollments, which is really high for um, comparison so yeah I'm really excited now I just need to make sure we have enough staff to uh, have all those, uh, all those groups. Can you think back to what the total number was after the enrollment period or application period last year? Yeah because so I mean again for K-5 now it's definitely yeah. 3 but the first year I think we were at about 40 and then I think last year we were probably getting close to 70. Yeah, so pretty significant. Yeah. Did it run at the same time of yeah, yeah time affected, of day and year? Yes, we affected at the same time. I mean, next year we're hoping actually to build in some opportunities for the afternoon and maybe more recreation based. Um, just thinking about the families that work. So that that's something that we're interested in proceeding to for next year, but one step at a time. some of those specialized areas. We would be the same. Um, we've been lucky with our shops in, in the last while that people have moved here and so people retired and we have that capacity but we're looking uh, for more people as our most uh, most districts for, for those um, areas. Things like French immersion are really difficult to not necessarily to place full time continuing people but if we also need um, TTSCs people mm -hmm. be humans hard to recruit people to come for casual casual work when there's there's work all over the province. And the uh, next are just these are just reminders really um, for the public and for the board that we have um, our employee recognition assembly um, on the fifth and um, the schedule is in there and we have Kevin Lemmer coming to the keynote. Um, it just an incredible um, speaker for the before and uh, so of course you're all welcome to attend and then we'll have the lunch in and um, give out our own service awards to uh, employees and that's at 1.15. We, we also have a retirement uh, dinner and I don't know the number we'll get to. We have 11 retirees. 11 retirees right now and uh, we will recognize them at uh, Brooks with Connor uh, Knickerbocker doing uh, the dinner for us at 6.30, June 14th. Um, the Brooks grad ceremony, again, just a reminder for you here that it's at uh, 4.30 and we have uh, reserved seats for 
um, for all of you uh, to be here. And uh, there's no ne necessary to RSVP, just we're there. It starts at 4.30. Just to clarify, 4.30 opens, 6 o'clock it starts. Uh, that seems to me, uh, that's news to me too. That's what I was getting by. Yeah, I we got the invite at my work, and it's four thirty. Doors open, six o'clock start. That's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll get. Which yeah. One are you we'll, we'll so what are you talking about? Crowd. Crowd. Oh, oh sorry. Crowd. Sorry. Crowd. Yeah. Um, so the next is the strategic planning update, and that's just so. Perfectly, people know where we are. We have Ella Wright, who's been working with us uh, as, as a consultant. She's been out um, meeting with our uh, different stakeholder uh, groups, gathering information to inform our strategic plan. Uh, she will be putting out a, a survey to those, uh, to those groups and a community wide survey uh, in the next few days to gather more information. Um, and our intention is to get to a draft, um, a draft plan by June 1st, and schools will then uh, develop their own plans on their planning day on the, the 5th, and then we'll take summer and into the fall to um, determine the next steps and solidify our, our plan by the end of the month, would be the hope the end of September we would have that. So, just an update. And the last is just the suspension and exclusion exclusion. Thanks, Jane. We're both the um, graduate or the. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask uh, are both the employee recognition assembly and the retirement dinner, those are both at Fritz? Yes. Go ahead. My question is going back to 6A enrollment projections. Like, do, do staff do um, future projections? And, like, at what point are we? like a new school or going back to a middle school or like when do we well it's re it's really it, it is difficult because we do get the birth rate for five yeah. years before yeah. uh and if there's any indicator that there's a big bubble but there isn't so and, and even in our um, change it hasn't been incoming case when we've grown it's been kind of all over the map and and most of it within our online Program. So, in terms of kind of bricks and mortar estimations, right now we don't um, you know, see, you know, other than, but if we still have this small growth, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're getting, some schools are very, very full and tight, and then that's always the difficulty is the ministry looks at you have room if you have room somewhere. And that's always the, you know, they get difficulty, right? The expectations before you even went to space, um, and and Steve, we said this before, they would actually likely want us to open ocean as a school before they would um, You mentioned 11 retirees. How many new onboarded
to see what kind of plans are. And then in June, we'll be adopting a, a capital plan submission. And then in September, there'll be another portion of the capital plan submission. This, this part of the South Pole is um, really much just what, what we plan to do with money that we know um, predictably what we're always getting. Uh, the spreadsheet that I, I've got in front of you is the middle column is the annual facility grant, but this is a, a working document that I, I uh, historically use to kind of track projects in general, prospective projects, and how we're funding them. So you'll see it lists, it lists some capital funding things like the daycares, which are out of the scope of the conversation. But I'll, I'll quickly whip through um, the schools and some of the plans, and I, I won't read verbatim, but kind of touch on some of the, the bigger ones. As you're aware, the, the board had allocated money in its local capital reserve a couple of years ago towards replacing portables at, at Brooks, and then that uh, got delayed by the year. But that's back on the table. The, the portables are nearing um, completion in the lower mainland with the arrival in, in late summer. Uh, but with our annual facility grant, what we'll be doing is we'll be moving the old portables off site and paving the rest of the old tennis court, which will almost complete the redevelopment of that courtyard area. And then when the new portables come, they'll be um, set up differently so to maximize the space of the court. Uh, the covered bike storage, uh, another initiative of the, the board. Um, we set aside uh, plans and had hoped to do it this past Fall, but we had delays with our building permit. We do have the permit now, but I don't expect we probably will undertake construction of the covered bike area until after school gets in. Most of our energy is focused in the, in the summer months on, on things that we couldn't otherwise do when schools are populated, where it's the, the location of the covered bike storage is in the upper parking lot by near the field house that supports the the turf field, so we know we can do that with school in session. So we we'll, we'll kind of scheduled that for late summer, early fall. Uh, Ocean View, uh, we allocated some money to some interior renovations, which we tend to do each year. And again, Ocean, Ocean View, to a lesser extent, Texas are buildings that we can find that we can get into a school in session just based on the types of programs, activities, or the occupation. Uh, we are allocated a substantial amount for replacing the mechanical, which serves the, the gym. The, the units on the roof there, I think, are, are original, so that's taking it down to the 70s. They don't, don't work well, can't get parts, so we're replacing that with a, a modern electric heat pump, which will eliminate the propane and it'll, it'll help with uh, reducing our carbon footprint. Texada window replacement uh, outside of the building we're in now. Texada is the last school to, to complete uh, envelope upgrades. And, and because of the location and, and uh, impracticality of bigger projects over there, we split that uh, job into multiple summers. So last summer, we replaced all the windows, window coverings on the, the entire side of the school that faces the road in the parking lot. And then We've allocated money to buy all the windows for the back side. The same thing will probably, uh, over the course of the year, look at replacing them. The, the lower area we can get out of the school in session and some of the upper, upper areas. The fire alarm system, uh, at both Texada and Kelly Creek, we place out, out some money to upgrade uh, over them. Kelly Creek, as, as everyone knows, is one of the two sites that will be getting a, a daycare. So that 1.1 there, that's um, money outside the scope here. But we are using some of our annual facility grant to, to prepare the site for the older portables from Brooks. So as part of the daycare planning, we'll be bringing those portables out there, uh, renovating them one at a time uh, with, with some money from the annual facility grant. One of our bigger projects with our own crews are some kind of washroom renovations, uh, similar to what was done at Henderson last year, James Thompson the, the year before. The lighting upgrade at Kelly Creek and James Thompson, although partially funded through um, the ministry's capital intake last year, where that's for the lighting upgrade itself, but we're increasing the, the scope to replace ceiling tiles and, and things like that while we're already doing it. So that's the the $15,000 line item coming from the AFG. 
Is the floor replacement update on the next day? That's like because there's. Seda specifically actually does, historically doesn't have um, much asbestos in the flooring. So it's a bit ironic that the, what would be called the battleship floor is so old that it predates asbestos, but it's in decent shape because the school has been so underutilized for, for so long. But there is some abatement that we would do at the same time about how the building. We did quite a bit when we did that daycare space as well. So all of that was renovated and we did for a long time as well. Westview, it's mostly the installation of the, the playground. We have hoped to have that done during the school year, but just based on, on availability of the equipment, it looks like it'll be early in July. Edge Hill, um, work has already started on the portable moves. So if you haven't, if you're familiar with the site, there's by portables, um, which is the crux of our business case for, for the addition. But there's two portables that crowd the covered area that we're just moving across the parking lot. And we have uh, right there today. They've got the electrical services and, and um, block wall in place. And then when school's out early in the, the summer, when the company's here to move the, the Brooks ones, they'll reposition ones at Edge Hill so they serve the school better. It's uh, the way they are now. Um, Prowess the covered area. There's some interior renovations, tied, uh, minor but um, important, tied to the, the student services suite and the office space that we want to reconfigure. We've done quite a bit of work at Henderson over the last few years, including this past spring break, so we don't have anything material there. Uh, James Thompson, the lighting upgrade is a similar scope to, to Kelly Creek, where we're augmenting the Ministry of Capital funds with some of our annual facility grant to do other renovations in the ceiling at the same time. There is some asbestos abatement and new flooring. Going into James Thompson, the last part of the school to, to be done is what you don't normally see. It's the old change rooms, which has been renovated for the packed kitchen. Um, that whole part of the wing is all that stuff will come out. There is some old asbestos tile that will be removed and then we'll put new, new flooring that's consistent with the rest of the school. And that'll complete the flooring upgrade of that in that building. And then the last couple, they're a bit place, placeholders. Our strategy has always been to um, allocate, allocate funds and projects throughout the school year, but our focus right now is tied to summer and then we'll reassess how things went in the summer and as, as long as all the projects we committed to were, were on budget then um, projects such as the uh, admin building and operations we proceed later in the, the fall once we know the money is available. Um, so that's specific to here. So we're, we're looking at the undertaking the design phase of redoing the envelope of, of this building, much like we've done at other schools, so new side and new windows. Uh, but prior to that, we have to upgrade the mechanical system, um, because right now we'll install a mechanical system. There is none here. It's just radium uh, baseboard with no, no ventilation, and all the offices on the other side of the building have a small apartment air conditioner, so we want to resolve that before replacing all the windows and having to put air conditioners back into it. And then the, the last piece in operations is um, placeholding some money to, to uh, consider start undertaking renovations up at the bus garage. So as you, as you know, we acquired that building from the city after renting it for many years. So now that we uh, own it, we're more comfortable starting to invest in it. And it's, um, it's got a lot of deferred maintenance in it. So we've got some money set aside and we can start to remedy some of those things. So. Any questions? Okay. And next, this is the Monthly spending report as at the end of April, uh, right now mid-May, so we're down to the last six weeks of the school year, which is also the last six, year, six weeks of the fiscal year. The, the bottom right-hand number, the 17, that's reporting that there's 17% of the operating budget left available. And similar to what I said last month, is if I compare this report to the same, same period la last year where, uh, where it was 22%, but that's Plan because last year our surplus was higher than expected, so 
I would expect to be spending at a, a greater rate so that although we likely will still have a surplus, it will be less than the year before. That's what that's right. Great. Thanks, Steve. Um, motion then that the uh, 23 24 annual facility grant plans be approved as presented. Jack and Lewis, seconded by Rob. All in favor? Great. And the second motion that the Secretary Treasurer's report be received as presented. First and moved, seconded by Jackson. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, so the committee reports. Quite a robust committee in the whole, starting with our lovely. PRDTA President Ms. Izzy Lovelock made a, a great presentation. And uh, the ultimate goal of working together with the district to increase student learning through teacher well being and professional development. Very succinct, and I sure appreciated uh, hearing from Izzy uh, about how the leadership feels about the value um, with the relationship with the, the superintendent in our district. So thanks again, Izzy, for that. Uh, the committee as a whole, uh, a couple of motions coming out of uh, that meeting. So a motion that the locally developed um, course for ELL, Introduction to Language and Culture 10, be approved as presented at the May 10th, 23 committee of the whole meeting, which you heard Jay speak to earlier, moved by Rob, seconded by Kirsten. All in favor? Carried. And a second motion that the proposed changes. Sorry, so this, the second, I just wanted to, we had a just a quick change, I uh, was able to talk with Izzy, if you remember, the community of hold that um, I had suggested that we wanted a, a line in there about our relationship with um, the DMC <coughs> and that it's, it's joint. So we didn't change any of the wording, we just added in the, the preamble, professional development is jointly managed through the collective agreement, um, which is Izzy agreed to, to bring to um, her membership, because that's in the collective agreement that um, even though we agree with the autonomy or around the choices made, um, the, the management and the funding is um, a joint venture. So that's just a change in the really Perfect. Yeah, and while we're on that, though, um, do you or Kristen want to speak a little bit about um, the purpose and intention around the changes that were made to, to the bylaws? Um, it, was, it was really around uh, simplicity and trying to, we want more uh, teachers to avail themselves to professional development and we recognize that there is a, a small number of teachers that know the rules really well and are able to navigate the system and others are saying it's, it's difficult and we had numerous categories that seem to overlap a bit and so we collapse those categories and they're just on proposal based um, applications. So it was really an attempt to, to streamline it and have it more understandable and have more um, people apply to the, uh, to the fund. And we do have um, a healthy surplus, and I know that uh, Izzy is bringing a proposal to her, to her members around uh, increasing the, the professional development uh, amount for uh, a period of time so that uh, we can use that. Because as I said, our, our whole intention, I know, the PRDTAs is that each year with the funding that we provide that we, we really would like to see a start of the year on uh, teachers uh, taking advantage of the question I don't know if you have anything to add, Z? Now, we've, we've added the piece that the district wanted in. To me, it makes perfect sense, and hopefully I will be calling our superintendent um, tomorrow evening and letting him know that um, we have a new executive and that the GNC bylaws are passed. I'm hoping to avoid some bloodsmithing at the mm -hmm. meeting, but with teachers, that's always a bit of a risk. Thanks. Thanks, Lizzie. Great. Anything to add, Kirsten? No, no, you're on the committee. Thanks so much. Okay. So the second motion arriving uh, out of the committee the whole meeting then that the proposed changes to the bylaws for the Joint Management Committee be adopted as presented at the May 10th, 23 Committee of the whole meeting. Jacqueline moves, seconded by Maureen. All in favor? See that motion is carried. Before we move to 8B, was there anything else out of the Committee of the Whole that anyone wanted to take note of? Okay, and that will move us to 8B, Northern Sunshine Coast Advisory Council. Go ahead, Martin. I did let the committee know that we would 
have a letter of support and ask them to send us some uh, draft language, which they will. Um, but they did have one question about, has the enrollment on TechSafe increased, is that question? Uh, or do we anticipate the increase? The enrollment at the elementary school? Yeah. It went up from? No, I think they're looking at students on TechSafe generally, because it's the bus issue, right? Right, okay, yeah, because the students in the elementary school would have a no, tied so to the ferry. So uh, secondary? There's 30. 33 in elementary at secondary, I don't have it readily available. I think when it came up sometime recently, I think there might be 20 something students at Brooke. So, you know, so there's not no big spike or anything? No, okay. not, not today. That's all they wanted to know. Yeah. development endeavors, things like that. We do a round table about that experience, so um, I'll, do, I'll start. Um, I really enjoyed the fantastic overview provided on the media and political landscape in BC that uh, Keith Baldry provided. Um, certainly his experience and knowledge provided some valuable insight and guidance for trustees as we move toward um, the midsection of our term. Um, the keynote presentation from Jody wilson Raybold was, uh, of course, interesting and insightful, and I really appreciated her taking the time to connect uh, for direct conversation and her book signing for True Reconciliation, How to Be a Force for Change, after uh, her presentation at the President's reception. Um, I enjoyed the governance session on roles and responsibilities. There's, of course, always uh, room for learning and growth for all trustees in, in sessions like that. And it's funny how you can attend the, the, the same content a number of times and each time walk away with a different takeaway um, to, to try and put into practice in our role here. Um, connecting with colleagues, of course, in other districts and learning about uh, their successes and challenges um, is uh, always time well spent and really valuable. So those were my sort of key takeaways from the event. Do you want to go ahead? I think that was an excellent summary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there was a there was a youth panel also that was I think a highlight for most of us that they talked about um, their experiences in schools. So that was um, there was, was every speaker is really um, enjoyable at least, and mm -hmm. I enjoy the um, the minutia of the AGM and the voting <laughs> <laughs> every time we go. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I didn't prepare anything, but yeah, the the student panel um, and just watching. I can't remember what was it Delta. I can't remember what school it was. The student panel. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's for Moet. Moet. Yeah, that was her. Okay. High school. Yeah, it was really amazing. Like really amazing, and just to watch the relationships even between the students and. Um, the superintendents, I guess there was a vice and assistant. assistant yeah, um, it was powerful. I could have, I could have watched that, the, you know, listened to that the whole AGM. But it was also really, really great to attend my first AGM and watch everyone um, deal with things on the fly when technology isn't working and just you know we're watching people work together i think would summarize my highlights and um yeah it's always a, a really a really informative time away with the bcsda so grateful to be part of that <clears throat> i think my biggest thing was when I heard that Jody Wilson Rabel was going to be talking at first, I was like, oh, what connection does she have to trustees or education? But I found her speech uh, really powerful, and she challenged all the districts to talk and to rethink. Um, if anyone's had a chance to read her book, the difference between what she calls herself an in betweener versus an ally. So she's saying, we talk a lot nowadays about allyship, but it's very performative. It's like showing up when we're asked and not really doing anything about it. but. She says when just even the, the term in between or made me think like it's actually putting yourself in those conversations to have those uncomfortable conversations. Um, so 
So yeah, she uses that word to refer to people like yourself who are willing to be a bridge between people from all walks of life. Because she talked about the idea of silos. We often talk about like the history of Indigenous Canadian relations, like we talked about in silos, like something that happened, and so we need to kind of break out of those silos and have those deeper conversations. So I found that pretty. Yeah, she said in between are people who embrace recognizing and respecting distinction and diversity and interdependence, cohesion and unity. So, let's change when we talk about allyship versus. Yeah. I have to say that was a highlight for me too. That whole conversation and rethinking what our role is was critically important. Um, I also was interested in Keith Baldry saying that he thought education was going to be the top item on the agenda for the provincial government going forward. I'm dead curious to see what form that takes. Okay, thanks everybody. And Kirsten didn't mention that you were up on stage as a reader. Oh, I would have thought that yes, was a highlight. Yes, totally. And you read the most. You read all of the all of You did motion yes. like three through <laughs> 20 whatever. Yeah, so. we were efficient. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Thanks so much for that, everybody. Okay, that moves us to question period. Should there be any from the gallery? Uh, where is the uh, graduation ceremony held? Uh, it's typically held at the uh, rec center. I think that's the plan moving forward. I don't know of any other venue yeah. in Hall River that could actually host that amount of people. How many yeah. grads are you expecting? That's mm, actually on a cheap uh, 140 is what I was going to be at. Cool. Okay. And uh, is there any breakdown of different types of levels of graduation? Are they all academic, technical, or not? Good question. Hmm. No, it's it's interesting phenomenon here. We have people walk, uh, they're in the ceremony if they've been in school for 13 years. So there's a whole different, so you could have graduated. Um, with honors, you could be in the trades, you could have not completed. Um, so it's more of a, a recognizing everyone who's been in school for that amount of time. Um, so we don't distinguish, um, like we don't have levels of graduation. So places like Ontario have different levels of graduation. We don't really have one graduation certificate. I shouldn't say we have two. If you're in French immersion, then you have a um, I have a uh, diploma, but we only have uh, one recognized uh, diploma. But I'm happy to talk to you about you know, how that works. Is that all your questions? That's all I can remember. Great. <laughs> okay, well, if you're interested, I'll be looking for a plus one if you want to join. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Go ahead, Eileen. Hi, thanks so much, Dan. Um, I wanted to uh, wanted to thank the, the board and, and Anna for drafting such great minutes and an agenda because it really gives me a sense. I've been out of the loop for a little while and gives me a really great sense of what's going on and where to um, you know, where to ask questions if I feel like I've missed something. Um, it's been really good seeing that the work that we continue to do on the APs. I think that's fabulous. Um, and like, uh, because as you know, that it's a big concern, and I know it's also a lot of work because they have to align to two major contracts, and there's a lot of pieces to it. So I just wanted to say thank you for doing that work because when you come in and you have to go back three months, you can just really see the progress and you can see the work that's going on, and that really helps. Great. Thanks, Colleen. Any other questions? Okay. How about from from you, Tanya? Um, I, I'm just wondering, um, maybe I can email you a bit, but the Keith Boulder, you mentioned him, and how did he connect the story media, and did he give a talk connecting to education or to students? Uh, yeah, no, he was speaking specifically around um, trustees and how we could uh, better advocate for the needs of students in our districts. And so he was um, first on the agenda, I think, for pre-conference, and so he delivered uh, about an hour or so of content. And um, uh, I can actually have a look on the hub when I get home sure. and see if there were slides from his presentation. There may or may not have been. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, his experience just as a media person, and I'm not sure how familiar you are 
with his work or not, but um, you know, he's got his finger on the pulse. And so he was able to offer some really good insight in, in terms of how to uh, kind of come together and develop sort of a local plan of action and then uh, move it forward through uh, media channels um, and connection. Okay. And I just have one more question. Uh, just about the outdoor education ecology program. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, is it called LEAP? Yeah, Leadership Ecology Outdoor Education. Is that right? No. Mm -hmm. Is that offered this summer? Yes, it's a summer program in, in July. Ryan Bar Barfoot is the, uh, the oh, right. lead teacher and he's done it for a number of years. And is it for a, a certain age group? High school students. Thanks. 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 Great, thanks. Eric, do you have something else? Yeah, you, uh, you were talking about the key quality presentation and you referred to the hubs. Oh, the hubs. <coughs> For, the hub is for um, trustees, and uh, it's a BCSTA portal. So the, our association um, collects resources from presentations we received and then stores that information um, in a central location that all trustees have access to. So you, as a member of the public, could go to the BCSTA website, and you'll see a certain number of resources available for your viewing pleasure. Um, but trustees have sort of backroom access to some of those things. Uh, like the presentation slides. Pardon me? <laughs> okay. Is that all the questions then? Great. Okay. Just looking for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I was expecting wrong. It's usually first on that. Jack and moves <laughs> all in favor. Great. Thank you everybody for coming. Enjoy that sunshine. Thank you. Jan, you don't hesitate to reach out if there's no okay. questions. Yeah. Thanks. I'll send you my okay. remarks. Thank you. Yeah.